Hi everyone and welcome to the second video of Lesson 6, Level 1. We'll continue where we left off in the previous video by discussing the third funding option that the zone is analyzing to determine the best way to come up with the $1 million needed for their TZ Edge project launch. Our third option requires that the company delay this project for 18 months and they'll invest 50000 of their monthly profits into an interest-bearing account. So every month, the zone will put in 50 grand into this account. This account will have an annual percentage rate, or APR, of 4%. We know what we want to get out of it, right? We need $1 million. If we put in 50,000 monthly payments for 18 months, that looks like we're going to end up putting in 900,000. In 18 months, Will it be enough to cover our needs if we take into that 4% annual percentage rate growth? If not, how much seed money do we need to put into the account right now so that we can guarantee that we have that $1 million 18 months from now? We have the periods per year here, 12. We have the interest rate, 4%. We have the duration of one and a half years. This represents how long we're going to delay the launch of our new TZ Edge company. The zone is going to invest 50000 per month. We know that we'll need $1 million at this point in the future, so the future value is therefore $1 million. Our goal in this option is to calculate the present value. How much do we need to invest right now, or presently, in order to achieve our future $1 million goal? To calculate this present value, we're going to use the PV function. It returns the present value of an investment the total amount that a series of future payments is worth right now. It takes in three mandatory arguments and two optional ones. The first argument or parameter is the rate. We know the annual percentage rate, or APR, is 4%, so we need to divide that by the periods per year here in column B. The next argument will be the number of periods. We know that the duration that we're going to put this off is one and a half years, and we hopefully remember that we need to multiply that by the number of periods per year in this cell in order to get the number of periods for this option. The third argument is the payment, which is here in column E. The fourth argument is the future value here in column G. This will be the cell containing our $1 million. Finally, the type argument. We set the previous options to zero here, meaning that the payment will be made at the end of the month, so we'll keep this up for consistency's sake. Now I'll close up the parentheses and hit return. It looks like we'll need an initial investment of over $69,000 in order to guarantee that we'll have our million in that account in 18 months waiting for us, even though we're also allocating $50,000 per month to that account. So that's option three. Now I'll look at option four. This option comes from a new institution that TZ Edge hasn't done business with in the past, Jihugis Bank. In order to build a relationship with us, the loan manager, Rip Uoff, has offered TZ Edge two new options. The first is a loan to be paid back over the next four years with equal semi-annual, or two payments, per year. These payments will be $150,000. We know that for this loan, the amount that we'll receive at the start of the loan will be $1 million, so that means that we'll have a positive $1 million here for this present value. Remember that it's positive because the million is flowing into our pockets. At the end of the loan, we want to owe nothing, so that only missing piece of this puzzle is the interest rate. How much is Mr. Uoff charging us percentage-wise for the use of Jai Hugis's money? To do this, we'll use the rate function. So equals rate. This returns the interest rate per period of a loan or an investment takes in three mandatory arguments and three optional ones. The first is the number of periods. This will be a two here in this column B. We need to multiply this by the duration of four years in column D. Next, we need to enter the payment. This is a periodic payment of 150000 here in column E. The present value of the loan is the $1 million in column F. The future value is the value at the end of the loan, so this is the zero here in column G. We'll be consistent and use zero for the type. The final argument is the guess argument. 
Notice that this rate function contains this additional argument, guess, not found in the PMT, PV, or FV functions. Excel uses an iterative process to determine the rate of the financial transaction. Iterative means to repeat a process with the aim of approaching a desired goal, target, or result. The iterative process in Excel automatically performs up to 20 iterations and selects a value if it finds an answer within one millionth of the desired result. If the desired result is not reached within 20 iterations, the rate function returns the hashtag or pound num error. By default, Excel starts the iterations with a value of 10%. Normally this is adequate and you don't need to put anything in here, but if you do get a hashtag or pound num error, you should include a guess argument to start the iteration process at a different point. For the purposes of this course, I've never seen a formula complicated enough to throw this error, but it could, and I wouldn't want you to be stumped if you ran into it. Moving on, I'll leave out this argument since it's optional, and we get an APR of 4.2 for this option. That seems like a rate that's a bit too good to be true, and that's because there's an error in our formula for this cell. This cell is asking for the annual percentage rate, isn't it? Well, like most of our financial formulas, the rate function returns the rate per period of the loan. How many periods per year are there in this option? Two. So we need to multiply this formula by the number of periods here in column B, which now gives us an APR of 8.5%. Glad I fixed that because that's a big difference. The last option from Jai Hugis Bank includes fixed quarterly payments of $95,000 until the loan amount is paid off. In this option, we know that the payments are quarterly, so this number is 4. RIP has told us that the APR is 6.5%. The present and future values are still 1 million and 0 respectively. The only unknown here is the loan duration in years. How long are we going to be stuck paying this loan for, I wonder? Well, let's find out what RIP is proposing. To calculate the duration, we're going to have to figure out the number of periods since this is the common thread among most of our financial formulas. Once we know that number of periods, we can divide that by the number of periods per year to get our duration in years. So here we have the NPER function. This will let us calculate the number of periods for this financial transaction. It takes three arguments and has two optional ones also. The first argument is going to be the rate. As always, we'll divide this APR in column C by the number of periods in this option from column B. Next, a comma, and then the payment. This will be 95,000 from column E, and then the present value from here in column F. The future values in column G, and finally we have to put a zero in for this type argument. This will give us the number of periods, but since this cell is supposed to be in years, We'll divide it by the number of periods in column B, and there you go. We're going to have to be paying the Jai Hugis Bank 95 grand for close to three years. Now that we've analyzed all five of these options, we have enough information to make an educated decision. Or do we? Which option should we recommend? Like so many things in life, that depends. Option two and three use existing funds, so that has the company avoiding any loans, which can be a serious drain on the bottom line. Additionally, going with option two also includes consuming $900,000 of the company's emergency liquid assets. This is a risk. If the company has $10 million laying around, $900,000 isn't that big of a deal. If it only has $1 million and we're taking $900,000 to fund this company, that is a big deal. Option three requires delaying the project for 18 months, and this may have ramifications as we don't know what the market for this product line will be 18 months from now. It might allow competitors to swoop in and capitalize on our caution, and also we might miss out on additional profits produced by TZ Edge over that 18 month period. These facts have to be weighed against the other loan options that would allow the company to write off the interest paid on the company's tax bill. If one of these other options are selected, a lower interest rate may be preferred. However, comma, 
Not only do the interest rates vary, but the duration varies from five to just under three years. The payments also vary from $61,000 to $150,000 as well. To give us another bit of information that may aid in our decision on these three loan options, we're going to go out to column H and determine the amount of money that we're going to have to pay each year. To do this, we simply take the periodic payment and multiply it by this number of periods per year. Let me copy this and then paste it into these last two options. Now having this information, we can see that this loan will cost the most annually. FIDO's option will only cost us $244,000, but it's over five years. Option four will cost us $300,000, but only for four years. And this last option will cost us $380,000 per year, but only for three years. The longer the duration, the lower the annual payment. Since this is a new company, the profits in the first year or two might not be that huge. Maybe we should keep our annual payments as low as possible. Maybe they're optimistic and are forecasting large sales and can afford the higher yearly payment and be out of debt in a shorter amount of time. Solely from a personal financial standpoint, this would be preferable to me as I've found out over my years that the sooner you're out of debt, the sooner you can really build wealth. But for the purposes of this course, we need to look at a few more data points to determine which option is best for TZ Edge. We won't be able to make a firm recommendation until we've considered a few other factors. For example, we have to analyze the projected cash flows for all of these options, as well as the possible tax implications of our choices. We'll look at these in the videos for the next level. See you then. Go Knowles!